Hello and welcome back to the Bitch Side Podcast channel. I'm your host, the HD of the BSB. Please like, share, comment on the YouTube video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Enable notifications to receive all the updates from this video and all the content on the channel, of course. And follow us on social media. The links will be in the description. Join us always for more and you are welcome. Of course, we're talking about the Champions League and we're previewing the second leg games from the midweek uh, in the Champions League. And let's start quickly by actually getting rid of the game where there is no real need for predicting or for previewing Manchester City hosting Sporting uh, Lisbon in England. The first leg ended 5-0, of course, for Man City. I don't think there's a big need to talk about anything in this game. And I'm actually recording this on a Sunday uh, before the game between Manchester City and Manchester United in the Premier League because I don't think that game will have any effect on City for the Champions League, at least for this round. It will have more effect on them in the Premier League debacle. And we'll talk about that in the episode, uh, in the podcast episode tomorrow. Um, my pr- the prediction obviously is easy. There's no need to talk about this game a lot. City will probably finish a job. They will even add more misery probably on Sporting Lisbon in that first uh, from that first leg and they will probably win by quite a comfortable score line obviously they're a guarantee for the quarter final and they will obviously aim to win the competition maybe let's face it on the second time try and hopefully they will go one better than last season and win the whole trophy moving on and we go to Bayern Munich versus RB Salzburg or Red Bull Salzburg um, in the second leg um, on, on Wednesday, of course. I'm going to revert back to PSG Real Madrid later on, but I'm going to go for a Tuesday's game between uh, our Bayern Munich and uh, Red Bull Salzburg. Now, Bayern Munich are in a quite of a rough batch at the moment, not necessarily in terms of result, although the result against Salzburg in the first leg was quite a rough one in its own, uh, in its own right, but certainly Bayern Munich have been in a bit of a, uh, of a purple patch as of late, losing to Bochum 4-2, then the draw against Salzburg in the Champions League, then a couple of, let's say, not very convincing wins against uh, against Cote Firth and, 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 and Eintracht Frankfurt, particularly against Cote Firth. They needed to turn things around in the second half to win, and then a grinding out a result against Eintracht Frankfurt, although I said that time that the positive thing would be a clean sheet. It wasn't to be against Leverkusen in the Bundesliga in, in the last game on Saturday, and they drawn one all, and they and there was some individual bad performances, namely Upa Meccano, which is not a good sign for, for things to come for Bayern Munich in the Champions League. I still think Bayern Munich will win. Um, I don't have any doubts over that, really. They will finish the job in the second leg. I don't really have loads of um you know loads of doubts over it but genuinely i can feel that you know this might affect Bayern for the rest of the season obviously champions league mainly because the bundesliga i think is a guarantee there's no real worries about the bundesliga going to to, to another club other than Bayern. but i think the champions league is always going to be the uh the ultimate objective for Bayern munich for, for any seasons and with the current suggested apparently changes in the structure of the club, about Bayern reportedly are going to be turning into a selling club. I don't know how this idea would work anyway, but apparently there will be a new concepts, you know, focusing on players coming from the academy, trying to develop those and then sell them, which is a weird idea for a side like Bayern Munich. I mean, I could understand it for, for a side like Salzburg, actually, the side that Bayern Munich are playing in the Champions League, who are coming in with a whole hierarchy. They sell players, they develop them, they win money of them, they, you know, they develop new players and they do the same and it's a, basically a cycle for Salzburg. I don't think it works for Bayern. They need quality players to replace the ones that are going to be leaving in a couple of years time. Surely the likes of Lewandowski, Thomas Muller, Manuel Neuer, those kind of big names like, you know, holding blocks basically in the Bayern squad that they might leave the club in a couple of years time. I assume Neuer is like 35 at the moment. I assume he'll have three to four years at the very best um, if he's at his best fitness. Thomas Muller maybe a couple of years, two or three. Lewandowski the same as well. Um, you know, age beats everyone eventually, but you know, quality remains. So I think at the moment, Bayern Munich are in a bit of a dilemma, both on and off the pitch. You know, obviously the injuries. You know, Tolisso. You know, Lucas Hernandez was a a bit of a doubt for this game against Salzburg, and with the way Upa Meccano has been performing alongside Sula and Pavar against Leverkusen, not just against Leverkusen, but in the last couple of games, you know, since that quarter Firth 
uh, since the Bochum defeat 4-2. I don't think it's pretty safe to say that it will be a good defensive performance from Bayern. The 3-4-2-1 is not exactly working. As far as Bayern are concerned, you know, Nagelsmann is still trying to find solutions for some of the problems that he has. And definitely things are not exactly looking good for Bayern at the moment. But obviously there's still time to turn it around. Hopefully players will return soon enough. Hopefully Bayern could have Davis and Gretzka back by the end of the season. Which will make so much difference um, in terms of, of options of course. And um, you know Bayern, I, again no doubt for me that they will win against Salzburg in the second, second leg. But obviously it's about the rest of the season and how they will deal with that. Moving on uh, to the next game, of course, and we're going to focus on Inter Milan versus Liverpool. Liverpool versus Inter Milan, as Liverpool are the hosts, are at Anfield, of course. And this is another game where really you can't say that Inter Milan have much of a chance to beat Liverpool at uh, at Anfield. I don't think that will happen. I think the first leg was their only chance, or the only realistic chance of beating Liverpool, and they had a good game. Like it's not the great game as some people want to paint it as but it was a good game they tried to press Liverpool they tried to play on the side of Trent Alexander-Arnold who we all know I think defensively still a little bit lacking compared to his offensive efforts and the assists he provides Inter Milan had good chances not exactly great chances but with better decision making you know as I always insisted um, with better decision making Inter Milan could have at least gotten the goal out of that game which maybe would have swayed the, the tie a little bit um, you know, uh, towards being more balanced and more equal. This is another game where I think Liverpool have this game in hand, have this game in 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 their in their uh, in in their clutch. And of course, with the title race still going on in the Premier League, and Liverpool playing on all fronts really by this time of the season, which is weird to say because usually Liverpool would probably been eliminated out of the Carabao, which they, they just won out of the FA Cup, which they are continuing in, and they go into the quarterfinals, of course. And then you have the Premier League. So basically, Liverpool. This is the first season under Jurgen Klopp where Liverpool are playing on all fronts by March, which is again a big uh, surprise for me big transition uh, from from the last couple of seasons where they were eliminated by both cups like by the by by February or by September by December even by Christmas you find them uh, being ousted of both cups and they just focus on the Premier League and the Champions League this is a different season how this will affect them um, I, I don't know really but as far as this game is concerned in particular I think they have all the tools uh, to be better than Inter Milan and to have uh, you know all what it takes really to finish the job and even with Inter Milan who defeated Salernitana 5-0 on Friday and that's a big momentum booster for them I don't think they will have enough to escape the the hell of Anfield and of course the atmosphere there the advantage is Liverpool in this one and with again game in Anfield in front of rabid fans and the quality is just better for Liverpool in the attacking departments that's where they really are superior to Inter Milan so that's why I really believe that Liverpool are still going to win again at Anfield and they will finish a job to go to the quarterfinal unfortunately for Inter Milan and we finish off by talking about Real Madrid hosting Paris Saint-Germain at the Santiago Bernabeu the tie obviously in round of 16 both sides played on Saturday of course PSG lost to Nice in the league and Real Madrid went away 4-1 winners against Sociedad at the Bernabeu, which is a big momentum booster for them against for the game against PSG. But obviously the circumstances are different because uh, the big point I think is obviously the fact that Casemiro is suspended, Mendy is suspended, and you have potential of Cruz not being there, which is going to be a big blow for Real Madrid in loads, loads of, of aspects. Of course, Ancelotti have to uh, you know readjust, have to change. Um, you know his his lineup. Although the game against Sociedad didn't really suggest that you know that change is going to be working really, because uh, people expected that Ancelotti will play the players that they that they will play against PSG as trying and testing the waters and see how they will work out, but he didn't, and he chose to play with you know uh, Casemiro and Modric and just swap Camavinga for Cruz who was injured. Um, starting with Rodrigo instead of Asensio, but obviously I think he will change the, the the lineup. And obviously the big loss for him, as far as I'm concerned, the big loss for Real Madrid is Mendy. It's not it's not in Casemiro because in the midfield I think Real Madrid 
can be solid enough, can put like three players or four players who can have a good battle in the midfield. But the fact is that Mendy offers a lot of solidity defensively on that left-hand side. A solidity that I don't think will be offered by uh, by Marcelo if he starts on that left-hand side. I don't think it will be offered by Nacho either if he starts on that left-hand side. Probably the closest they will come to that is David Alaba. And I really doubt it because Alaba is even more attacking. Mane did as well uh, in terms of being a left-back. If he plays as a centre-half, do you really r risk playing Nacho on a side where potentially there will be Mbappe or Di Maria or Neymar, which the three of them could be absolute nightmares for the, the full-backs for, for Real Madrid. And obviously there's Carvajal on the other side. So that's going to be a whole other battle on its own. And they don't have options really. They can't play Lucas Vasquez there. And they can't really and they don't really have a solid right-back second-hand option really on them, uh, Real Madrid at the moment. So it is what it is for Real Madrid. For PSG, they were lackadaisical against Nice. They were pretty, let's say, nonchalant about that game against Nice. And they lost it, I think. In a way, in a perverse way, they have the right to because they're going to be winning the league anyway by the end of the season. But against Real Madrid, they need to focus and get their focus back. The first game was phenomenal from them tactically. The midfield, they absolutely bossed it. And, you know, they had the, the, the bench, they had the squad to, to substitute and obviously bring on players that they will cause more troubles for Real Madrid. And they will play, I think, a much more comfortable game. I think they will try to be calm uh, under pressure against Real Madrid. They don't want the same mistakes that happened against Barcelona back in 2017 or against Man City. You know, trying to play nervous and stressed and try to, to start the game strong and score early and, and finish the game. I don't think PSG will go that way. They know they have quality in the attacking departments. Even superior to Real Madrid, with all the respect to Vinicius and Benzema having uh, a great season, uh, both of those players. But I think Neymar, Mbappe, Messi and Di Maria is much more superior quality than what Real Madrid have. But because PSG know that way, I think maybe they will start by benching one of those and, you know, trying to play... A much more calmer, stern game, much more conservative game. You're trying to uh, circle Real Madrid and close down on them in the midfield, not allow them to find spaces behind the PSG defence. And that will, uh, you know, the, the longer the game goes nil-nil, for example, or PSG leading by an early goal, I think that will make a big difference. And Real Madrid will try and find solutions. They'll enter that panic mode, which they rarely do, even normal circumstances. But in the Champions League, it's even rarer for Real Madrid to be panicked and to be sort of, you know, all over the place. But that might happen if PSG have a better game. Again, it's going to be all about the midfield with both Casemiro and Cruz potentially absent. Mendy not, not being there is going to create loads of issues for, for, for Ancelotti as far as team selection, as far as the way he's going to play and the instructions he's going to give to, to his fullbacks. Obviously, you can't even risk it. In even like for, for for a low percentage, you can't even risk having your fullbacks being offensive to support your uh, your quest to win because you have players on the other side who can really hurt you at any time and you know almost to their to their own will. Like not even because you leave them uh, your spaces, it's because they want to hurt you and they want to uh, attack you. You know those players. You know it, it's just it's just an, an unbelievable task as far as Ancelotti is concerned to make the balance between trying. to to play high and trying to score and trying to impress and trying to finish the game and get the game uh, a little bit balanced as early as possible, scoring an early goal and trying to bring the game to an aggregate score of one all and then just, you know, seeing the game off from there. It's different to, uh, you know, just sitting back and playing on the counter, which I think will be impossible because PSG and this PSG side under Pochettino, maybe they have loads of bad qualities to them or they have loads of negatives about them, but I think one positive thing is then not as uh, you know rushing to get things done as they used to be probably they will try and be more calmer they'll try to control the, the ball a little bit and try to wear Real Madrid down and try to force them into making rash decisions and try to force them into making uh, you know um, you know decisions that they can't be uh, really um, you know effective in terms of scoring or control in the game my prediction is still the same from from the first leg I think I still 
favor PSG just a little bit because I think uh, Real Madrid and with the absentees that they will have I think the the favor goes to PSG in in that one for the game again between Inter Mil Liverpool Inter Milan I go to Liverpool obviously Bar Munich to beat Salzburg and go through and of course no doubt about it City uh, are already I think through in the quarterfinals so that's my four from the first uh, you know from the first fixtures of the second leg of round of 16 of the Champions League that's it for this video like share comment what you think and subscribe to the YouTube channel enable notifications to receive all the updates and of course follow us on social media the link is in the description and until next time i will see you soon